don't have to be productive to earn your rest. If you are sick, chronically or otherwise, and you're not feeling good, you deserve your rest, whether you feel like you've been productive enough to earn it or not. It's not earned, it just is. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, April 4. I am continuing Plan As You Go month where I show how I use my Erin Condren, my bullet journal, my power sheets together in tandem for a whole month. And wow, you guys, I opened up questions again yesterday and I got hella questions, hella questions. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing I did last time and split them up over two days because there ain't no way, my dudes. I have actually been awake for quite some time this morning. I had a phone call this morning at 7 a.m. and I am still asleep, basically. So we'll see how, but I've got today, we talked about this yesterday. Today is one of those busy as fuck kind of days. So I just gotta barrel through this, but let's take a look at my power sheets first. I finished my quarter one analysis yesterday. I did more work on this. I did a lot more planning, which was great. I'm almost done with my 30 day analysis. I meal planned, which was not something I had on the schedule for yesterday, but looking at today, I figured I'd get it out of the way. I did not cook with asparagus. I actually bought all the things for it, but I was so nauseated yesterday in the afternoon that I decided I wasn't gonna cook that when I, I want to eat it, but I wasn't ready to eat anything. So I just ate some soup and my husband found something in the fridge and we dealt that way. And so maybe tonight before we go out, otherwise I'll make it on Friday night. I did my skincare, did my hundred day project. That's about it. So we'll move forward. I'm not going to worry about my power, like anything off of my power sheets today, because as you're going to see, my day is already fairly full without adding anything else to my plate. I'm not actually going to be working too much in my Erin Condor because as you can see, I filled it up yesterday and there is no more room, but I want to just bring a couple things to your attention. For one, I've already done this meeting. For two, I already meal planned. On here, I have starting my sermon, date night, a phone call at 1130, and then Katie's dentist appointment. Now, I do not have to take Katie to the dentist appointment, which is great. So that frees up some of my afternoon because I, didn't, I don't have to meal plan. There's a couple of things that are not on here that need to get done. I need to work on a freelance project and get the, that piece wrapped up for today. I need to get this video done. And then I need to spend quite a bit of time working on my sermon. We'll see how that goes. The movie tonight is at seven. So that's like my hard stop is time to get ready for the movie. So I'm just going to take this and move straight to my bullet journal because I, I'm not, as you can see, I've already kind of filled my day up. I had a rough evening last night. It was not great. I did not take a painkiller, but I was feeling pretty awful, both nauseated and in quite a bit of pain. So I didn't take a painkiller mostly because I was nauseated and I didn't want to barf it up. Too much information? Maybe. So today's doodle is Mr. Krabs and I spelt it wrong. My bad. While I draw Mr. Krabs, I'm gonna do something I'm calling the lightning round. I am going to bust through a bunch of questions you guys ask that have short answers as opposed to my usual long-winded rambling. Whilst I draw my dude, Mr. Krabs, who's another one of my favorite characters on SpongeBob because he's such an ass clown. And the guy who does his voice, Clancy Brown, was in Pet Cemetery 2. He was the guy who was like, Drew, buddy. Some people may hate that movie. I think that movie is like a perfect example of fucking cheese ball magic. And I'm excited. I'm going to see Pet Cemetery tonight. Like I said, I'm going to lightning round my way through some questions while I do this doodle. And the first one is from Kelsey who asked my thoughts on Simply Gilded's upcoming April theme. I saw the succulents and immediately thought of you and snorted some water. I haven't even looked at it yet. It's so funny. Like I, I get the monthly kit every month, but I do not generally look at it. Not because I'm like, Ooh, I want to be surprised. I just, I generally know I'm going to kind of like the stuff that they do. I don't worry too much about it. Succulents kind of will make me giggle as well, I'm sure. That's never stopped me from using Simply Gilded washi tape before. Ashton asked, what are some of your favorite shops to buy sticker from and how do you decide what to buy? I don't think it's any surprise. My main favorite sticker shops are Once More With Love and Chrissian Designs. I have been using like stickers in my planner for several years now, so it's fairly simple for me to decide what I want. I know the colors I like. And I know kind of, I know I love icons and I know I love munchkins for the activities that, I'm a, that I do. The easiest way to decide is to try some things and to sort of discover what your style is and to buy slowly. Samplers are great because they give you an opportunity to try different stickers. So if you can get a sampler and see if there's something that you like, that's one thing. But for me, 
I know I want, like, I know I need laptop stickers because I use them all the time. So I buy laptop stickers or I need music stickers because I use music stickers all the time. So identifying what you might want to use stickers for will help you kind of determine which ones to get. I know that's a really vague answer. I could probably do a longer video on that. That's not really a lightning round answer. Joanna asked, will I be doing any of the 100 days challenge here during plan as you go or will I only be doing it with my patrons? Uh, I don't know. I don't really do the 100 days challenge in my planner and a lot of the times I don't do it in the morning anyway, I do it later. So maybe, maybe not. I would probably lean towards not during these plan as you go videos, but you never know, depends on the day. Chances are if I'm gonna do it anywhere besides with my patrons, like for you to see it, it's probably gonna be on Instagram, but I don't know for sure. So stay tuned. Mwala Emin, Mwala Emin, I'm so sorry if I butchered that, said, do you think ever think you can publish a book on lettering? I know you have tutorials here on YouTube and Instagram, but personally I find a physical book or an ebook is so much more useful in the long run. And then she says a lot of other really nice things. Anyway, all this to say that if you had a published book on lettering, it would be great. No comment. <laughs> Amanda Schultz asked, where did the eggplant come from? Tell us the origin story. I can't actually take credit for it. It started, I mean, it's been kind of a, like a, a joke emoji when it comes to like penis for a long time now. And it really started becoming associated with me during my first Wild 30. A lot of the people who were in that first Wild 30 would drop it during the comments of live streams and so on and so forth. Gabby had two random questions. Prefer hot or cold pizza? Hot, but I actually really like microwave next day pizza as well. Pineapple or no pineapple? Fucking no pineapple, dude. All I eat on my pizza is pepperoni, potentially extra cheese. That's it. I am a simple person. It's a reading thing asked, have you ever considered designing your own planner? I thought about it. It's A, seems like a lot of work that I just don't know if I'm in the mood to do and B, this will come up at a different question, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, but I also don't necessarily want the perfect planner. I want a planner that's a little bit uncomfortable because that forces me to be creative with how I use it. I don't know, but I have thought about it. I just, it's not something I like, it's a far off thinking about kind of thing. Christina asked, how is budget planning going? Am I still in the plum paper budget planner? No, I'm not in the plum paper budget planner and I'm my budget plan is going like shit. If you haven't watched the power sheets update, my budgeting has been basically non-existent. Something I still need to really work on pretty hardcore. Rachel Turner asked, I've been watching the short lettering vids you've been posting on Instagram, which I love and appreciate. It'd be awesome to see them in real time to see the strokes <laughs> slowly. Can I do a new lettering sp series specifically on the lettering I currently do in my planner and journal? Yes, and that is something I am planning, so stay tuned. Caroline asked, do you, or have you ever used fountain pens? What do you think of them? Much like the planner community, it sometimes feels there's a lot of, look what I bought, but isn't it, aren't I amazing with expensive things which can be off-putting and disheartening? I do not have a lot of experience with fountain pens. I have a nice one that I still need to try and I've had some that I have tried to use. There's a live stream on my channel, which I will link if you wanna go check it out, where I tried to mess with a fountain pen and I made a gigantic mess and it is pretty funny, but also horrifying to the fountain pen people. I do not have a lot of experience with fountain pens. That's not a new hobby I really wanna pick up because I just, it's, I have enough expensive hobbies to begin with. So I don't have any real thoughts on fountain pens, except that I don't have a lot of experience with them. And, and that's about all I got to say about that. And the last question for the lightning round is from Kelly, who said, have you seen the latest mild liner brush pens? They're Japan only for now, as far as I know, wondering if I have an opinion. I do not, I think, I mean, my opinion is I want to try them out because I love mild liners and I love brush pens, but I do not have the patience to wait for like some Japan shipping or whatever. So I don't know yet if I'm going to try and get them now or just wait till they're available in the US. I do want to try them though, but I don't know what they're like because I haven't tried them yet. There you go, Mr. Krabs, aren't you so cute? The lettering challenge for today is Bobbit Worm. I read about this. It makes me think of a wiener. Now I got a question from Caroline Crutchfield who said, I'm new to the channel as of the end of the February plan with me and I still don't completely have a grasp on what I exactly use the power sheets for and how they work. And is it a specific brand or if I just designed it for my own method? It is a specific brand, Cultivate What Matters. They have a whole set. I'm gonna link up above the video where I went through the prep work 
of the power sheets because before you get into like the monthly stuff, there's a whole bunch of questions and stuff they ask to help you figure out what your goals are. But what I use them for is a way to kind of keep an eye on my bigger priorities for the year, which I determined through the prep work of the power sheets. So I didn't just come up with all the things that are in it just off the top of my head. There was a lot of thinking that was done at the beginning of the year to kind of structure that. They're basically to keep reminding me of the things that I have said I want to be working on over the course of 2019. I hope that helps. So there are two questions about YouTube and those will be the last ones I'll answer today. I have a lot of really great questions about planning, FOMO, things like that, which I was gonna try and answer some of them today, but I think all of them require a little bit more thought and I just don't have a lot of time to dedicate to that today. So I will answer those tomorrow. But the YouTube questions, there's two of them and I will answer them right about meow. So if your question is not answered today, watch tomorrow. That's one way to keep you here, right? First one is from Sin469 who said, any advice on starting a YouTube channel? My biggest advice is to start. Just start the YouTube channel. Don't wait, don't worry about being perfect. If you have a smartphone and an internet connection, you have everything you need. Start making videos. They're not gonna be perfect and you're, that's okay. You should see my original lettering videos. They are janky as fuck. You just start making them because you get practice the more you do it. Start it and know why you wanna do it. If you wanna do it to make money, I, that's not something I would recommend because the mon there is some money to be made but it takes a while and it's a pain in the ass. Make it because you wanna try it for a hobby. See if you like it. Just give it a try. That's my biggest advice. And don't take yourself too seriously and don't worry about fucking up. It's more important to just start putting things out there because remember, people aren't necessarily gonna see it right away. So when they find you, they're gonna see whatever the most recent thing you did is, not all the bullshit you tried to do at the beginning. And if they go back and watch it, generally they're not gonna judge you. So yeah, that's my big advice is just give it a shot. Just try it. Stop thinking about it. Just try it. Oh, I guess the other tip would be talk to the camera like it's a person. Don't talk to it like it's a camera. It's easy for me at this point because I love talking to you guys. And that's what it feels like I'm doing is chatting with you guys, which I am. It just, it takes a little bit of practice. But if you think about the camera as a person, it's a lot easier to sound natural. I should say while I'm in here, since I've been kind of glazing over all of this, that I did do the majority of the stuff on my list yesterday, which is good. So... I'm not like super far behind on what I, what I need to be doing this week, especially considering that I kept having, like I haven't been able to talk about a lot of the things that I'm in the middle of right now, but as soon as I can, I'll let you guys know. But like, I'm just, it's a lot of good things, but it's just been a whirlwind of a week in my life. And so trying to stay on top of my list is, who knows? Joanna also mentioned in her comment about how fast I'm talking. It's a combination of just trying to get through questions and caffeine. And this morning I'm also so exhausted and I tend to talk a lot faster when I'm tired. Maybe because I'm worried if I stop talking, I'm gonna fall asleep. This second YouTube question is from Diane who said, I want need want to build my YouTube and videos in general. I have a few video things, but not really sure what else I need. I don't wanna spend a crap load of money on unnecessary things. Like I said, I'm gonna do a video at some point showing my setup. What I have done this whole time, Diane, is add as time goes on, especially when I started bringing in a little bit of money from AdSense or whatever. You don't need to go buy the best camera or the best tripod or whatever all at once. You start working with what you have. A smartphone is perfect. Smartphone camera is better than a lot of other cameras. As you work, you will discover what more you need. Everything I've bought has been as it's come up. What is the thing where the upgrade would be the most bang for your buck? That's where you want to upgrade first. I wrote this in here and I'm checking it off because I already did it and I had to get up early for it. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna answer one more question and this is gonna be a little bit of a longer one, but I just, I really wanna talk about this one. And it's from Jeanette who said, I also have a chronic illness, lupus, which brings me pain and fatigue. If it hits me hard at the end of the week, I can usually deal with it because I feel like I've earned that rest if it has been a productive week. However, it is particularly a bummer when it hits hard at the beginning of the week. Facing those weeks are difficult since I don't know when I'll get my energy back. 
which causes me to not have motivation to plan for the week. Have you found this to be similar for you? If so, how do you approach planning for your week when you are feeling particularly crappy at the beginning of it? And I think this is going to be a podcast episode at some point, but I will say short kind of thinking off the cuff answer here. Yes, I have had those weeks often. You don't have to be productive to earn your rest. If you are sick chronically or otherwise, and you're not feeling good, you deserve your rest, whether you feel like you've been productive enough to earn it or not. It's not earned. It just is. I look at my list of things, like I look at the things I need to do that week and I find the things that absolutely have to get done and make a short list of those, maybe not even in my planner so that I can try and get them done when I feel okay, but not to put the burden of doing anything extra that week. Just the things that like, I'm the only one who can do them and they have to be done that week because then at least I know what the bare minimum is and I do my best to get through them. I don't try and schedule anything else. And then if I start to feel better, I can always add more to my plate. That's the way I get through it. I don't feel very motivated and I feel kind of bummed out, but I just push through it because I, there's a part of me, there's been times where I haven't pushed through it when I've had the, like, if I don't have the energy to push through it, then I don't have the energy to push through it. But if I have enough energy to get through at least the bare minimum, I've had situations where I haven't been able to, and the next week I've paid for it. And so I try to remind myself of that. And that gives me the motivation. It's hard. It's hard to live your life with a chronic illness, especially when it takes you out so early in the game in a week where you feel like your shit has just gone to shit. Focusing on the things that are the most important and giving myself the whole week to do them is usually the best way I can get through it. I'm having so much trouble focusing right now. I think I'm just going to stop answering questions and finish making my list. I think the tiredness is starting to hit me. I think I'm going to work on cleaning my social media feed when I'm having my lunch because originally I was going to do it when I took Katie to the dentist, but since I'm not taking Katie to the, dent to the dentist, normally on my lunch, I just sort of aimlessly scroll or I read a book because I try to not do like work work, but cleaning my social media feed is something that I could probably have some fun with. Like, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm starting to hit my exhausted place. And so I'm going to need to have a cup of coffee, which is going to make me completely sail off the edge of the world and try and wake my ass up before my next phone call. So the question I have for all of you that I would love to throw into the comments is actually having to do with Jeanette's question. Um, whether you have a chronic illness or not, when you start a week off and you feel like you've gotten a slow or a crappy or a not feeling good, whatever the case may be, where the start of your week is kind of a, is a downer, how do you motivate yourself to get through the rest of it? Whether you're pushing through a chronic illness or whether you are just trying to find the motivation. Do you have any tips for trying to pull through when the beginning of your week feels like some bullshit? Let us know in the comments below. I will not be asking for new questions today because I have a bunch to answer tomorrow. So wait for the next video for that. But I appreciate all of you who asked the questions. And if you haven't had yours answered yet, pay attention to tomorrow's video. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in tomorrow's plan as you go video.